Hello, I am Stephen. And I am Jessica. And we are taking over the International Title Academy's Instagram page for today. Yeah. Um, we're in Malaysia currently. Uh, we are in Kuala Lumpur, to be precise. And we are both online English teachers who went through the International Title Academy's online program uh, about a year and a half ago now. Yeah, a year and a yeah. half now. Yeah. yeah. And we've been on the road for eight months now. We've been backpacking for eight months um, and teaching online as we go. So I guess today we're just going to tell you guys a little, little bit about that, answer your questions, and show you as much as we can of Kuala Lumpur. Um, Which is not much under no, the No, we're in lockdown, so we can't, <laughs> can't show you too much. But um, we can show you the supermarket, and we can show you pretty much our day in isolation. And we'll try and answer as many questions we can about online teaching and the kind of benefits and pros and cons of it. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so we're going to put a question box here. And all right, so individually, like I said, I am Stephen. I'm from Scotland, um, uh, an old town called Trun on the west coast of Scotland. I've been in America for 10 years. I went to college to play uh, men's volleyball on a scholarship. I uh, ended up working in higher ed for about four and a half, five years afterwards. Um, and I met Jess when I was there, obviously, and we've been traveling for the last eight months or so. Um, for me, uh, getting into this was a big thing. Uh, I've always wanted to travel long term. I've, I've always kind of left the house and just gone out places travel a lot but um, being tied down to the office was starting to drive me a bit insane so I was getting the edge to heavily go and it's been a really big breath of fresh air for me to get out and see the world and do it at our own pace and online teaching has allowed us to to do that for sure so obviously right now we're still locked down but we are still in Malaysia which is nice um, but it's been my blast so far and I'm looking forward to showing you a little bit more about our life right now. And a little bit about me. I am from America. I was born and raised in North Carolina, and I had no consideration of ever traveling like this. Um, I really didn't think that it was possible. And then I found ITA just randomly at the office one day and told Stephen about the idea, and we were sold at that point. So, um, yeah, so right now we travel uh, the world, really. Uh, we're on the other side of the world right now, like we said, in Malaysia and we do teach online. So that's gonna be the biggest, um, the biggest thing that we're gonna talk about today is how we make money and more specifically how we've been able to teach and make money consistently during this pandemic as well, which is a really wonderful thing to have. Um, yeah, for us not to have to worry about that, but to still be on the other side of the world. So I uh, hope you guys ask all the questions and enjoy the takeover. All right, so uh, like we said, we live in Kuala Lumpur um, and we've been traveling. We mainly use Airbnb um, for accommodations and because we're traveling so much, we change um, usually on a monthly basis uh, for spending less time, like two, two or three weeks at a time. Um, one of the things, and it's one of the biggest misconceptions about traveling is that you can do it really, really affordably, and especially if you're earning money like we are yeah. teaching online. Um, we're so. making the same money roughly that we made at home in our nine to five jobs, and we are spending a third of, of the money, if even that. If even that, if yeah. even that, like, and that's like yeah. splurging for the month, like yeah. here in Kuala Lumpur. So we're we'll do the math later, so you can see exactly yeah. like what we what we spend and everything like that. But we'll, um, we'll but it's really it, accessible. Yeah. It's really really accessible Absolutely. to see. But um, but yeah, so we'll show you our apartment. And I'll tell you a little bit about the price and stuff in just one second. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, the apartment that we have here, um, this one costs six hundred and eighty dollars for the month, um, which is actually the highest amount that we've actually spent. As we, we splurged on it a little bit because yeah. we know that we wanted to be comfortable, uh, we knew we wanted to be kind of living happily during this. That we don't know how I was long about we're going to say, gonna yeah, be, we're uh, spending you know. twenty four hours here, so we wanted to be comfortable and have some space. But um, but again, six hundred and eighty bucks for a month compared to rent in America, the UK is pretty insane. So that's three hundred. That's, yeah, that's together. So three hundred and forty dollars each. Um, for the entire month, um, and we'll show you the apartment right now, okay? All right, you guys, so this is a pretty big apartment for what we get. Excuse the mess, we haven't really cleaned up yet, but this is a really big uh, living room, as you can tell. We've got a TV that we hook up our laptops to to watch um, movies. We have a balcony, and if we weren't in isolation, the balcony actually overlooks the pool. So we have a really, really nice pool as well. miss being down there. But that's the thing about Kuala Lumpur too is that most of the apartment complexes you can get, whether it's through Airbnb or a host, will come with a pool. Um, it's almost always just a thing that they throw in there. So you'll always have a pool to go to and a gym to work and out in. Side note, 
the Batu Caves with the big colourful stairs are right behind this building. Yeah. You can't see them. In our I old know. apartment, we used to be in this building. And our balcony, we could see the Batu Caves from. Oh, yes, Logan. <laughs> Lumper, it's a beautiful mosque over there with the teal turquoise ceiling and then we have the government building right there so it's a really really nice view and the palace is over here the king of malaysia is in this little building right here way down there so pretty solid and that's yeah. a small balcony too which is nice yeah and we've got obviously a big dining area right here we have sorry for the mess our back our bedroom and bathroom in here again sorry for the mess it's kind of jazz like, all jazz oh, i love out of a backpack um, yeah, so really, really big. Stephen will show you around here. This is a space that Jess actually been using for that little bathroom. Yeah. We do have another bathroom, but it's smaller. And then we walk down this great. Hi guys. Hello. All right, and then we're gonna come into the kitchen, and we have a really, really big kitchen this time. Uh, we've actually got a wet kitchen and a dry kitchen, so we've got all of this. We don't have a whole lot of essentials like uh, a working oven, things like that, but we do have a fridge, we've got a tiny oven here, we have a burner, and this is what you're going to find in most Malaysian homes, um, actually most Southeast Asian homes in general, you're going to find this, and this is what you'll cook or you'll stir fry or you'll boil noodles on, that kind of thing. They're violent. They are. They're violent. They go <laughs> from zero to a hundred like really, really quickly. Yes, and so we're not going to show you that. That's, that's, a box of, that's a box of wine that Jess bought. And we've got a washer and dryer, so... That's very clutch. This is really clutch, too. We haven't had a dryer since we left America, because um, usually they'll just hang up there, they're drying, but it's really useful in Kuala Lumpur to have a dryer, because it rains every single day, and you have to take in your clothes back and forth every day, which is really annoying, so that's really good to have. Okay. So, obviously, uh, we're all going through the coronavirus problem at the minute. Um, we ended up staying in here. We'll tell you more about the reasons for why we stayed here. Um, but the control or moving control order in Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia as a whole means that we can only go out for groceries, similar to a lot of the places in Europe and Asia. Um, and they have police blockades every few miles to stop people actually doing that. Luckily, the supermarket that we go to is fairly close by, so we never have to deal with that. Um, we have public transport, still not public transport, but Grab, which is basically Uber, um, still is available, so we can get Ubers over there or Grabs. Yeah. And get our shop and we'll show you the restrictions that they have in place so we're going to get in get out quite quickly um because jess has a class at one o'clock yeah and i'm going to be doing some other stuff which i'll show you so yeah get your mask on your mask on also look at this spot terrible all right so we are prepared ready to go waiting for our grab and this is the current situation I loathe these masks with a passion. I have a beard and I'm one of the sweatiest humans you'll ever met. It makes my life an absolute misery, so I'm going to be in a really bad mood for the next hour. So I will be on the stories more than Stephen will be. No, we'll both be on them. Um, and we are excited to show you guys what the supermarket looks like because they all look really different in Southeast Asia, so this one's really good. Okay, so a little bit of a change in plans. Uh, we ordered the grab and they got here and immediately told us that they could only take one person. So Steven went with him. I just ordered myself another grab and um, I will be meeting Steven at the store. So again, that's part of the movement control. I don't, we've never had this issue before. We go to the grocery shop every week, but I guess they're cracking down on grab even more. So that is the new rule. Um, one passenger at a time in a car and so I will be meeting Steven soon. All right, you guys, so Another change of plans. Um, my class starts at one o'clock, so I don't actually have time to go to the store with Steven and um, wait in line. So Steven's there right now. He says it's a really, really big line. It'll probably take about 30 or 40 minutes to even get into the store. So we definitely don't have time for that. But I am going to grab some essentials. I'm gonna grab some coffee, because we are out of that, and some biscuits for a little snack later on um, at the grocery store in the apartment complex. So I'll show you guys that and show you guys that um, you pretty much have all the essentials in these little shops, but we like to go to the big grocery stores to get even more stuff. So I'll show you guys that in a second. Okay, so this is what the store looks like. I will show you inside in a second, but we've got a grocery store here. 
We have a shop where they have fresh fruits and vegetables that they have pretty much every day. And then on the second floor over here, we have an Indian restaurant that we love to go to when we can actually, you know, order food. So, there you go. So this is the store from the inside. They've got really all the essentials. They've got some Western stuff, some cereal, chips, pretty much everything that you need. And then of course, lots of coffee. Love the coffee. And you will find these stores pretty much in every apartment complex as well as this. They always have one of these stores just chilling in the complex for you. So as you can see, Jess and I got separated um, from each other because we can only let one person in the grab. It's a rule that they just brought in. Um, but you can see behind us, this is the line for the supermarket. And uh, Jess actually really loves going to the supermarket um, and she's not gonna have time to be able to do that and then teach. So I'm gonna come back so that she can go shopping tomorrow because I'm lovely that way. So we're probably just gonna get some delivery today and we'll take you to the, to the shopping center first thing tomorrow morning. So there you go. So we had to grab a couple of essentials at the shop in our apartment complex, but we're gonna just eat in today because we're wonderful and we just wanna eat a pizza, so. <laughs> and we'll also show you guys the wonder that is grabbed. Yeah. Because that's one of our favorite things about Colvin Bread <laughs> is all the food. It's amazing. I know, there's so much bloody food, so many variations of it. And it's still dead cheap too. But I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. So on Sunday morning, Stephen and I usually have a full schedule. We are teaching from 9 o'clock in the morning, and I personally teach from 9 o'clock until 2. Um, Stephen teaches from 9 o'clock until 12. But today, all of our students, well, most of them, cancel classes this morning because it's National Day in China. So um, they will have a day off during the week, and they have today to make up some of those classes. So um, we had the whole morning off, but I just have one class to teach from my typical morning schedule, um, and that's what I will teach at 1 o'clock. So Stephen... You can see he's gearing up. He's getting ready to start his walking. He has started to do this um, this walk that he came up with for uh, to raise some money for charity for the NHS. So he'll tell you a little bit about that. But yeah, I get to sit and drink coffee while he does it, which is lovely. Uh, so basically, it's going to look really weird um, throughout the day because I'm pretty much going to be walking in a circle or in the apartment. I'm basically trying to walk 301 miles doing the loops of the apartment. Um, to raise money for a charity um, for the NHS back home. So if you see me in the background of the story today and I'm just walking endlessly, I'm not going insane. Um, I'm just trying to do something healthy. <laughs> um, and it's a good way to keep myself fit as well on the yeah. side. And, good excuse um, to order pizza. And it's just because it validates any alcohol or pizza. I drink <laughs> like 1,500 calories. So I walked 11 miles yesterday and I'm going to try and do it the same today. So. You got it, Stevie. Bye. Bye. Okay guys, so some of you might wonder why we chose to self-isolate in Kuala Lumpur and one of the main reasons being Stephen is from the UK and I'm from America. So cutting through the red tape of the immigration and dealing with how long we have to stay in each country and then being apart from each other, like that was something that we just did not want to do. Um, and it was our last resort. So we chose not to. We chose to come to Kuala Lumpur where we felt really comfortable, really safe, and they actually gave us the longest visa that we could attain in Southeast Asia. So that was a really big perk as well. And they're not, uh, and they're also, if anyone came in before the moving control order came in place, if it expires, if our three months expire while it's in place, they won't find us, they won't charge us, and we can extend another month afterwards. So we're pretty much fine as long as it's happening, exactly. which is nice. And it has a really solid medical system too. So it's a good place to be. Yeah. So as Stephen said, the medical system is really, really good, and we only get 90 days in the country at one time. Uh, that is the extent of our visa, but like he said, um, we are able to extend it while self-isolation is in progress, I guess what you would say, yeah, while the, the movement order is. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's good. It's a good place to be. We're comfortable, and there's lots of Western meetings so we can get normal food too. So we're not yeah. we're not going too crazy in here. We've been really comfortable the whole time. And that's been 56 days now. So, um, so yeah, it was worth it, and we didn't really want to risk just being apart from each other because we yeah. don't know when we could get out of America again. Exactly. We could know when the UK. So and that was a really big thing for us. We wanted to because we're backpacking, we're traveling Southeast Asia. So. Southeast Asia will most likely open their borders again before America and the UK will. So we didn't want to end up in a position where we got stuck in our countries and not be able to travel, which is the whole point of this whole thing. 
Uh, we are going to answer some more specific questions that you guys have later on in the night. So put the questions in that question box that we did earlier. But we're going to tell you some pros and cons of teaching online right now. So so with online teaching, there's always benefits that come with it. Um, your location is whatever you want it to be. So whether or not you are a stay-at-home mom that wants to get a few extra hours in, whether you want to do full-time travel like we're doing, or whether you just want to work from home the whole time, you can get almost a full schedule. Um, and the pay is good enough that you can support yourself. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll make a full breakdown, but I'm earning almost as much as I was earning in a full-time 40-hour-a-week job and I am only working 19 hours a week right now. So um, that's pretty phenomenal. And like to the second point that this whole COVID-19 stuff isn't really a big stress for us right now. It's stressful in terms of the situation itself, but um, because we are earning money, we don't have that issue. You know, we're lucky enough that we're not one of the ones that are losing the jobs and our business has actually improved because of it, because we there's more Chinese at students home. at home. So yeah. um, it's a kind of weird irony that it actually makes it better for us in some cases. So that's a big pro. Uh, just the way to get started, so it's just me now. But uh, one of the other massive things about doing the online teaching it is that you can travel as much as you want to. Um, we've designed our schedule so that we only work Friday nights, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. So Monday through Friday is completely our own, um, which is amazing because if we're staying in one place for a month at a time, that gives us more than enough time to see everything that we want to see, to go on some extra trips in between. Um, and we do have the ability to take some weekends off if we want to as well. Um, our company is a little bit more strict in terms of what they do so because we, we have a schedule built in, which is really good for money because it's a steady income. Other companies are more flexible and you can change what you do week by week, but you may earn a little bit less money and it's not guaranteed. So it's a trade-off in that regard in terms of what you want. But for us, it's been amazing that we've traveled to eight countries in the last eight months, I think. So um, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really good. <laughs> the big stresses that you have in it is that with you moving around a lot, this isn't a, applied as much if you work from just home in the US, the UK or wherever, is that you have to make sure that you have a good Wi-Fi, that you're, if you don't have that, that your cellular works really, really well. And if you're traveling as a pair, you have to have uh, enough space between you. If you're traveling as a solo person, you can save even more money because you can get one bedroom somewhere. We always have to have somewhere that has what good enough Wi-Fi and two bedrooms or, or an extra bedroom or a large enough bathroom. So that's one downside that we have, that we have to spend slightly more than we would normally have to. Um, but again, it doesn't matter too much. It's, um, but that's that's the biggest stress that we have. We had issues in Mongolia. If you if you watched our um, our stories from the last time we did this, we were in Mongolia and that was the worst time we've had with it. Our download speed was just terrible. So um, that was stressful, but here has been perfect. We have like three meg 300 megabytes per second, which is perfect. So it's been, it's been the breeze here. Okay, so I don't have too much to add from what Stephen said because everything that he said was correct. Um, it's the whole reason why we teach online. Um, and the whole reason for that being is to travel the world. And the only real issues that we ever have is the space because there are two of us that, that we ended up doing in Mongolia is to just get a SIM card. Every country that you go to, get a SIM card and use your hotspot, use your data to guarantee that you have a really strong Wi-Fi connection. I know a lot of teachers do that who teach online because you can't ever really rely on the Wi-Fi, especially if there's two people using it at the same time. So that's a good tip. All right, so I'm just going to start my first class of the day. Um, I have a trial class, which is basically what our company uses as a marketing tool. So all the, the students will get a free lesson, basically, where we assess where they're at um, based on the reading, their listening, whatever else that goes along with it place in the natural class and the parents will decide if they want to use our company or not. Um, at this point I only have one trial class this weekend. All the rest of my classes are taken up by regulars. So I, ha I now have 18 regular classes per week, um, which is really, really solid for, for six months at a time. So that's 18 hours a week that I have for six months straight, which is lovely. Trials come and go, um, and like I said, they're only one-offs, but they last for 50 minutes. Um, and they're pretty simple. You learn the material really quickly, and it's, okay, this is my setup. So, super simple setup. Well, that's not even part of it. Yeah. Just the computer. Just the computer. And the yeah. platform. Yeah. Um, and some companies that you have, uh, I'm not sure, I won't list any others, but um, they require you to wear certain t-shirts or a polo shirt or whatever, a certain color. And they also require you to have a background, which we used to think about doing, but we ended up not because Wales doesn't actually push that. So we've just never bothered because it's a bit nuisance carrying all that stuff around. Yeah. Um, but some companies will make you do that. So that's something to think about. That if you're with one of those companies, you have to have something that you can use 
carry around and put up wherever you go. They can stash in your backpack? Yeah, they can stash wherever you can. It doesn't get broken all the time. But we, we choose not to do it. We never had any complaints and it's not an issue with them. Um, we also just use our, these, these headphones with the microphone. We do have these um, if you want to use stuff like that and some require those. But again, our company said as long as the sound is good, you're absolutely fine with us. Yeah. Um, another thing is the props. Uh, one thing you'll probably learn in International Technical Academy's courses is to use props all the time. And they are encouraged to use them. So when we can use props, we do try to use them. But again, we don't have a whole bunch that we carry with us all the time. And again, this varies from company to company. Some companies want you to have an array of different things. Ours doesn't require it all the time. Um, but we will use them occasionally if we have them available, depending on the class. Yeah. Um, this is also the platform, it's what it looks like. I don't have my kids in, I'm just waiting for them to appear. They'll appear right here. Yeah. Um, and then all the material is already done for you, so that's everything that we have to do. Yeah. It goes through it, e sounds whatever else, um, and you just go from there. Yeah. Pretty simple. We just teach and use TPR and use yeah. lots of hand signals. Lots of hand Face gestures, yep, everything that you'll learn in IT's course. Definitely. Thank you, ITA. So we get a lot of questions about what company we teach for, and we decided to uh, join the Wales English team. So we teach for Wales English, and there are going to be a lot of companies that you'll find whenever you search for online teaching. You're going to find popular ones like VIP Kid, uh, GoGo Kid. Um, a lot of other ones. I think Palfish is one of them as Palfish, well. Palfish, Data APC, so, so many. Um, and so whenever we were searching for a company to work for, we looked at all those options. And Stephen is obviously British. I'm American. And Stephen couldn't work for a lot of the American companies like VIP Kid, um, Go Go Kid too, right? Yeah. Couldn't work for them. So he found Wales English first. And then I followed in suit because they actually have one of the highest pays in the industry. So we get really good pay. We can make up to, what, $27 an hour? Up to including bonuses. Up to yeah. including yeah. bonuses, $27 an hour. Like Steven said earlier, our company doesn't require that we have a background. Whenever we teach, they want us to have, at the very least, a solid background. So like if you teach up against a wall or something like that. Um, and they don't require too many props. The platform really does a lot for you. So that was really, really helpful being backpackers because we don't have to carry around a uh, background. We don't have to carry around maps and props and all these things that you would typically find in a normal classroom. So that was really helpful. Um, and something about Wales English that's different than other companies is their format for teaching. When you teach for Wales, you will have two types of classes. One being the trial class that Stephen just explained to you, um, where you have one student and that is it. You will not teach them again. And the second class is a regular class. So Stephen kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, but a regular class is when you're guaranteed to have the same children uh, every week for 25 weeks essentially and that is more of a normal format of a class where if you were teaching a student you would have them for the entire year and we really really appreciated that a lot of companies don't do that um, you'll have classes where you'll open slots up and random children or random students will fill in those slots every week but we actually get to build a relationship with our students and our students parents and it's really, really nice to have the same faces every week. So that is how Stephen and I are teaching and keeping the pay coming in consistently. Stephen and I both mentioned this before, but now that we have been working for Wales for about seven months now, we are both making the same amount of money that we would make it back at home. Each of us are pulling in about $2,000 every month pretty consistently. Um, obviously that's tax free because we don't work for an American or a UK based company and our bills are very, very minimal. You guys will see in a few minutes because I'll post uh, um, an expense sheet, I guess, of what you can expect to uh, pay for in Kuala Lumpur. But um, yeah, we're making really good money and saving a lot of money, which is really, really nice. So. That's always a perk. Yeah, good, good, okay? But today, Kiki, when you see the letter E, I want you to think E, E. Kiki, can you say E? So insurance definitely needed it. We use a company called Safety Wing. Um, there's other ones like World Nomads, but Safety Wing, you can do monthly payments, which is nice instead of paying one big um, lump sum. Um, they covered us for coronavirus stuff too, so if you wanted to fly home, you could have actually done that too. Yeah. Okay, so this one is pretty standard. It's going to be really all across the board for all companies. You're going to submit an application, have a resume, and then you're going to have some kind of mock class interview, and then hopefully you get hired. Oh. Yeah.
Galatri will not win you. Oh, wait. Yeah. Well, it will win you major points. Thank you. Not with me. Not with me. So Zune and I both get paid in U.S. dollars, and as far as taxes are concerned, it depends on where you're from. Uh, with America, you just look on the IRS website, and they'll give you really detailed instructions on how to file your taxes. If you're from the U.K., you don't have to worry if you're not in the country, though. Real. Instructor concert, though. <laughs> <laughs> She's criticizing my responses, so now I have to... I'm criticizing her criticism of me. It's nonsense. It's very upsetting for everyone involved. You can't criticize criticism. Yes, you can. Why? Uh, so after the first month and a half to two months, um, we were doing okay. We, we, we were already, we only started teaching a month before we left actually. So we had a little bit of savings and then we just closed it. But now we've hit our stride and we're both earning between $1,700 and $2,000 a month. So it takes, it varies. But the best advice for doing it is just maximize the amount of slots that you can do. Um, do as many trainings as you can so you can take as many classes as possible and just you know, just, just try and make your profile look as, as good as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, the more effort you put, the more you gain. Exactly. Okay, so with this question, I'm really not sure what you mean. I'm assuming that you mean that you are of the Muslim faith and that you literally wear a veil. I'm not sure actually what companies accept that and what companies don't. That would be something to email the company about and ask for yourself. I'm sorry. This is a really varied question. Every country is completely different. If you're from the UK or America, a lot of the time it's going to be really, really easy. Absolutely. Um, I've only had to actually get two visas at all. Malaysia, we could walk straight in and get three months. So it varies on every easy. single country. You should just do your research before you start traveling. Yeah. And adding on to what Stephen said, he did say that it was very varied, which is very true. Um, it's been relatively easy for us in Asia. We haven't had much difficulty, but if you just do your research, you really will find that it's, it's pretty straightforward. It just takes some time in some countries. All right, Lassie. Great to see that you're Scottish, Daisy. Oh, we're dirt, look. Tartan as well. Perfect. Um, but we did the <laughs> online course. Uh, yes, yeah, so it, was, it was great. Um, you're at a straight disadvantage for having a Scottish accent, so make sure you develop a Maybe. nice neutral one for teaching. <laughs> Um, it's a tough one because obviously we are not in the same boat as that, but our company does accept non-native speakers. You just have to basically be able to highlight a, a high degree of competency in yeah. English and have a fairly neutral accent with it. So just make sure you're practicing as much as you can to make it flat. Be 10 times over the top in your mock lesson. Absolutely. Like lots of hands and ah! Even if you know that you're not going to be that animated in class, go over the top. So the go ham. Absolutely. Definitely. I went just crazy. I had a giant frog that I threw around. And if you're applying for wills, you might actually end up with me as your trainer because I teach all the new trainees. So, well, not all of them, but some of them. So, it if you need. <laughs> Nobody wants to um, But if you need any extra help, just message our account and we'll be able to help you through a lot of things. If you want. No, we have not taught with any other companies. Wales English was both of our first experience teaching online, and we've been really happy with them. So, we think that we'll probably stick with them for quite a while. Cheers to that. So this one is obviously very difficult for me to answer because I have only traveled with Steven, but if I were traveling solo, I would absolutely still do most of the things that I'm already doing, but I would just be really, really cautious and be really smart about your decisions. One thing that I found out in the countries that we visited is that even if I was a little bit concerned, I generally find that there's nothing to be concerned about once I'm there. So uh, just take general precautions, research the place ahead of time, and just be smart. Trust your instinct. And be and tall like us. If I could say that we've learned anything, it's that people are people all over the world, no matter where you're from. So um, people are generally kind, and that's the truth of it. So um, like I said, just be smart. And if you have any questions, uh, ask me on our account. So if we don't have a steady Wi-Fi connection in our apartment or our Airbnb, we use our hotspot on ourselves, and we work up to 20 hours a week. So part-time compared to what we did at home and we're making the same amount of money and that's our max we've set that it's not changing the slightest all we do is watch tv and drink wine in different places all over the world we, we don't even go out we just no. sit in our apartments and just say that we've traveled and drink wine yeah we post pretty pictures but that's about it <laughs> my god <laughs> Uh, but seriously, it has caused a big dent in our plans. Obviously, we were hoping to have been to another couple of countries in this time, but we don't have a time set on this, so it's no. not the end of the world for us, and we're still having a nice time just hanging out, and we're still teaching. So yeah. We'll visit all the countries. It just, just push. If one thing has changed, it's that we're actually working out every day because there's no excuse not to. So we're losing weight, we're getting fit. And but we've still went through about 15 bottles of wine in the last two weeks. <laughs> Quarantine. <laughs> Take everything that you think you need and then take a third of that. Yeah. 
literally one third of whatever you think you need when you're leaving is what you actually need yeah. it's a completely different lifestyle and you don't need everything you need and you'll learn that and you'll throw things away like we have thank you so much for that we hope that you are doing well and staying safe as well we are safe we are quarantined self-isolated for now almost 60 days i love with jess so it's it's not easy but that was pre-covid too so i hope you're doing well the most we've stayed anywhere has been a month, yeah. um, then, but then we have other places that will go for like a week or a few days here and there. Yeah. We have the complete freedom to do what we want with it. So it's, it's really, it's brilliant. I love it. And backpacking is interesting. It's really freeing. If you're packing for hot and cold weather all at one time, it can be really, really difficult because you don't have a lot of space in your backpack, but that's about the only struggle we've run into. It's, it's quite freeing. Just put on it's weight. weird, Just put on freeing. weight when it's cold. Don't do that. This is the best thing ever. She's from the south. She's from the south. But from day one, I made fun of her for saying no, because she sounds Australian. She didn't believe me until she met some Australian pals, and they all went, why do you say no? You remind me like of an Australian. Home. It's weird. No, no sense. So to answer your question, I guess it depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to somebody back home, I sound more southern. Uh, I say y'all and all that kind of stuff. If I just talk to normal neutral accent people i sound australian with a little bit of british so so as far as we're aware wales doesn't have an actual age threshold um we know a lot of people who are 40 50 into their 60s teaching online so um go for it if you want to do it if you want to travel the world teach don't want to travel the world and teach go for it um no honestly uh i was an english tutor at school um i was an english major i was in the writing, in the writing center um, other than that, neither was there any formal stuff. We did do our practicum with ITA though. Um, and that really so helped yeah. us, for sure. Yeah. So I still use my bank from back home. I still use BB&T from America and Stephen uses Wells Fargo. He was in the country for 10 yeah. years. So. so it's the same thing basically. Yeah, we don't withdraw money too much, but we do use a travel credit card to gain points. So we pretty much use that wherever we go. But if you move around a lot, you're going to find that some countries are much more friendly for cards than others. In China, we had to do money. In Vietnam, we had to do money a lot. Like this physical, like, like cash. Physical cash, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, it's absolutely fine to take card everywhere. China, we had to have cash all the time. Vietnam, same thing. Ellie, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> if I could tell myself one thing, it would be not to be scared. Not to be so scared um, of what people would say or what people would think. And just to know that this is going to be the coolest experience of your life. Sometimes I think that I wouldn't, I shouldn't have worked in the office as long as I, as I did. But if I didn't work as long as that, I wouldn't have known that I needed to do something completely different. So that's an important thing that I had to learn. You wouldn't have appreciated it no. as much. Stephen and I both use 65 liter backpacks. So our brand is Eagle Creek. Osprey. Oh, hey. <laughs> Osprey is a really good brand too, but that's what it looks like. And I can't show you mine because mine is still full of clothes, but there you go. <laughs> Uh, it's tough in this situation, but the best advice um, with everything being closed is just to talk to ITA as much as you can. Yeah. Um, they are there for a reason. They, they support you the whole time, so just talk to them. Ask them for advice, and they'll do what they can to help you. Absolutely. We, we have, have one. one! So it's relatively new. We are just beginning to post videos now, but if you guys are interested in knowing what our YouTube channel is, message us on our private account, and we'll give it to you. Blah, blah, blah. Ah! So originally we wanted to teach in person, we were going to go to China and teach for a year, but after thinking about it, we were like, we're going to go there and we're just going to have another routine that we were trying to escape to begin with. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. But the second that we realized we could teach online and just bounce around and live wherever the heck we wanted, yeah, that was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer, absolutely. And we're not looking back and we have no real... No regrets. We can yeah. literally go anywhere and teach anywhere in the world. Neither of us have actually taught in a physical classroom, so we can't really give you pros and cons on that. But what we do know is that we wanted as much freedom as possible, and teaching online gave us that. So like we said, we can teach in any country in the world at any given time. We were really lucky. We got in, obviously, before all this stuff started, yeah. um, so we were in a really good position. Right now, it may be harder. It may be harder. I honestly not do not know. Lie to you. But if you can manage it, it's worth it. It is worth it. So worth it. The only bills that I have are my student loans from my bachelor's degree from my college, so that's all that I pay every month, and Stephen... A couple of credit cards. Yeah. We paid off our, our car, I, paid, uh, I sold my car before we left. Yeah, we sold our cars. So that's pretty much it. Really. That's all that we have. Yeah. All right, you guys, it is 
four o'clock, almost four o'clock here in Malaysia. So we are going to say good night now. And if you guys have any more questions, message us on this account right here and we'll get back to you. We will. Thank you guys for tuning in. I promise.